said, oh, wow, would that be great? And I looked at my bank account and said, nope. <laughs> and uh, then I thought, you know what? People like what I'm doing. Maybe they will help me out. And I started the GoFundMe, and here I am. Uh, in large part because of, of you guys. And it's amazing, and I appreciate it. Uh, who had never heard of Hero Press before coming to work camp? All right, a few. It's good. Um, I want to tell you the story, but I could talk about the story for the whole day, and I can't do that. So I'm going to tell you as much of the story as I can <coughs> without taking all the rest of the day. Um, my name is Topher, and I have been a WordPress developer since 2010. I built uh, websites with PHP and MySQL before that since about 1999. And <clears throat> about a year and a half ago, I started working for a WordPress agency called XWP. Uh, they used to be called XTeam. They're a VIP agency. We built very large websites for companies all over the world. And uh, last year at WordCamp San Francisco, my whole team was there. We didn't meet very often, very distributed team. And uh, the team was there, and I was introducing them to everyone. And somebody said, oh, I nominate Tover to be a, a WordPress evangelist. And our owner was there, and it was the first time I'd ever met him. And he looked at me with a funny little smile, and he said, would you like that? And I said, well, yeah. Who wouldn't want to go to all the WordCamps and shake all the hands? And uh, a couple months after that, uh, right before American Thanksgiving, so in the mid-November, uh, he sent me an email just out of the blue that said, you're not working on client work anymore. I want you to build something special for WordPress. And that was it. And so I emailed him back and I said, well, what is it? He said, that's your journey to discover. He was giving me open season to build something, anything that I thought was big and cool and amazing. And at the time he was thinking of business, he, he wanted to make a new company. We would, we would build a product or a service or something that would change the way people use WordPress. And he made available to me uh, a, a, word, a small WordPress agency in Kolkata. He said, I've I bought the time from these guys for the next couple months. If you need to build something, just use them. So I spent some time getting to know uh, a guy named Jeet. And we just talked long into the night about everything. Uh, he was getting married, and you know, we talked about my kids, and we talked about work, and we talked about everything. And one day, he just, he got a little frustrated, and he, he told me how hard it was for his team, his agency, to get good contracts. They contracted a lot with US agencies, and most of the jobs they got were small. Small in pay, small in scope, small in everything. And he said a lot of the problem was stereotype. People looked at his team as cheap Indian labor. And I looked at their work. They were very competent. They were excellent WordPress developers. Uh, they, could, they could have built anything that they wanted to. And he said, he asked me, what do I do? How can I change that? And right then I said, I don't know. Um, but it stuck with me. It made me think. How can, I, how can I help him find an answer? Um, I, I had my own ideas, but I didn't want to give my ideas. Um, I'm a rich white American. What do I know? You know, I've never been to Kolkata. I've never been, done business in India. I've never, I've never been Indian talking to somebody from America. So, I thought, well, what he needs is somebody from India who has already done this, already figured this out. Somebody somewhere has figured this out. How do I find that person? 
So I talked to my friend Sam Seidler, who works for, uh, he works directly for Matt Mullenweg. And he works a lot with uh, Glot Press and uh, translation work. So he travels all over the world. And he's been to India a number of times. And he said, well, you know, WordCamp Mumbai is coming. And I know the guys who are organizing it. Here are their names. Talk to them. So I got a hold of Aditya and Sorum and uh, several other people. And I said, here's the question. Do you have an answer? And they said, well, yeah, absolutely. Stop looking in America. <laughs> There's lots of work in India. Stop trying to, to convince somebody on another continent that you are reliable and qualified. And go into the office of someone in your city and shake their hand, look them in the eye, and, and prove to them that you can do this. And that was the core idea for Hero Press. Find somebody who has a problem, something, anything, and then find somebody else who is similar and has overcome that problem and have them speak to each other. And uh, at the time, I was thinking uh, I would get people from all over the world talking to everybody in the whole world. And my boss, Dave, said, well, no, you need to think smaller. Often, the person with the solution is near the person with the problem. They might be sitting next to them. They might be in the same city. Um, or if, if the problem isn't geographic, maybe it's the same, same kind of people. Maybe, maybe it's uh, a, a woman who is struggling with getting respect in a man's world. Well, there are women pretty much everywhere who have that same problem. And so we started trying to match similar types. Um, there's a young man in South Africa who had a terrible speech impediment as a child. And he suffered socially because of it. He had a terrible time in school. He didn't have friends. And so he decided to start writing because he could communicate perfectly in writing. And he found WordPress. And through WordPress, he met other people with the same problem. And they worked together to overcome that problem. And it took him years, and he worked, and he struggled. But with the support of family, and friends, and community, and his writing, he overcame his speech impediment. And now he speaks perfectly fine. And WordPress enabled that for him. And so he wanted to then write for Hero Press to anyone else in the world who needs some kind of outlet to be able to communicate with the world. Oh, that got louder. <laughs> and he was the first one to come to me, always before I'd gone and found people and said, will you please write for Hero Press? He read some essays and he came to me and he said, I have to tell my story. Will you please let me write on, on Hero Press? I said, well, are, are you kidding me? That's perfect write and, and send it to me and I will put it up there. Um, but I need to back up a little bit. When we first had this idea, it was going to be videos. It was going to be like TED, where smart people would stand in front of the camera and talk for 20 minutes. And then we would have it be really polished and fancy. And it wasn't going to be like your Mac laptop camera. We were going to find a videographer in whatever city this person was. We had people all over the world. And we were going to send them to their home or send them to the studio and all that stuff. And it was going to be big and complicated and slow and expensive. And we did a Kickstarter and we were looking for 60,000 Australian dollars. And what we really wanted was for 60,000 people to give a dollar. Because we wanted the, the, the ground swell of, of people saying, this is a great idea. What we got was four different companies giving $5,000 each, which is great. I mean, we had $20,000, but that was not $60,000. Um, and it wasn't from people. It wasn't, we didn't get that, that rush of people saying, this is great. And so um, I had been working on this for about three months, drawing my regular salary. Um, we had some other people that we hired as well. My boss put about $30,000 
in out of his own money, not company money. This was coming out of his pocket in this project. And he said, I can't I can't keep this up indefinitely. We didn't get the Kickstarter. We're gonna have to pull the plug, Hero Press is dead. And I couldn't let it go. <laughs> Uh, he had told me when we started this that there might not be a place for me back at XWP. They had needed to fill my position. Um, this was an all or nothing. Hero press or I'm out. Um, and it wasn't a threat, it wasn't punishment, it's just that's the way the company needed to go at the time. And so when Hero Press ended, I needed to find something to do. Um, they found some work for me there and I, I worked there for a couple more months. But I couldn't let go of Europress. And as soon as we ended the Kickstarter, I got a flood of emails from people saying, you can't let this die. This is a wonderful idea. This is a beautiful idea. And I said, where were you during the Kickstarter? <laughs> um, but it wasn't about the money. It was about the idea. And so I thought, how can we still do this without any money? And the first thing that came to mind was get rid of the video and make it text. And suddenly, it takes one day instead of a month. It takes no money instead of lots of money. And I can do it all by myself. Uh, so I asked Dave if I could do this, and he didn't answer. And I asked again, and he didn't answer. So I just did it. I went to Andrei Savchenko. Uh, he goes by Rarst online. He's in Ukraine. He's a wonderful developer. He's a nice guy. Um, in the WordPress community, he's fairly alone. He, there is not a WordPress community in Ukraine. And when I first went to him, he was ecstatic. He's like, this is great. I'm on the periphery. I'm, I'm excluded. I need to be part of something bigger, and I want to write for you. So I went back to him, and I said, hey, would you do it in text instead? Text is much faster bandwidth, because we're trying to write to people who might, have, might not have great internet connection. And um, he said, yeah, I can write it this afternoon. I thought, great. So he wrote an essay, and I just published it. And it's funny. Um, that day got more traffic than any other single day in HeroPress by like three or four times. And I'm pretty sure it was because it was the first one because the community had seen us try something and fail and then come back and say, here it is, anyway. We did it anyway. And the whole world went and looked. And it was amazing. <laughs> I'm getting choked up just talking about it. Um, it, was, it was really amazing. But then I had to find somebody else. <laughs> that was just one essay. Um, so then I went back to uh, Sorum and Aditya and I said, guys, I need, I need writers, quick, who can write? And so they did essays and uh, I just started asking around people I knew who had great stories. And um, they said, yes, universally. Um, well, no, you know, not universally. There were a few people who said no. Um, people whose stories were too hard heard a lot of stories that didn't make it to Hero Press. People who started an essay and wrote to me and said, I can't do this. I can't put this out. WordPress changed their life. It made it better. It was wonderful. But reliving some of those things was just too much. And then there are other people who were on the fence, where it was still very, very difficult, but they did it anyway. And that changed their life. Just writing a HeroPress essay, I've had several people say to me, writing this essay changed my life. 
speaking about it, talking about it, and having a hundred people send me tweets and emails saying, your story changed my life, and or it's going to change my life, and you've inspired me. Um, I get I get that all the time from people that say, you know, Hero Pass is, is great, it's changed my life. But I don't think anybody's life has been changed more than mine. All right, I have to change the subject. I'm going to just <laughs> Has anyone ever not heard of Wapu? Everybody's heard of Wapu? Okay. Well, I'll tell you anyway. Wapu was, in, was created for WordPress Tokyo. And uh, since then, it's become very famous. And my friend Michelle Schell, who was an essay, uh, essay contributor, made this one for Hero Press. Um, she's very, very good. She's made dozens of these things. They're awesome. Uh, can you do the, the Google slide? Here you can see people, other people other than Michelle. You know, there are just hundreds of them everywhere. Um, and they're really, really fun. The one, uh, the one that's very, very complicated there next to the woman, that's the one from Japan uh, over to the left. Yeah, that's that was the first one, and uh, it's kind of hard to even understand what's going on now when there's so much going on. All right, can you go to the Hero Press slide? Uh, this is HeroPress.com. This is where we publish the essays. Uh, this is a blog post I did last night, trying to stay awake. <laughs> uh, go down until you find the first contributor. There we go. This is Shiva Abraham. Does anybody not know Shiva? Great, everybody knows Shiva. Um, when I, I, I wanted to find somebody from India to do an essay right before Pune. And I went to Saurabh and I said, do you know anybody? Who, who do you suggest? And he said, Shiva, but she won't do it. <laughs> I said, why not? He said, oh, she's shy. She doesn't want to get out there. And uh, so, but I said, you know what, I'll try. I emailed her. And uh, the email I got back said, I was going to say no. But then I read your website and I read what some of the things you say and some of the things other people have said. And I feel that I, I need to tell my story. And just that was inspiring. Just hearing that, you know, other people's stories inspired her. And this was, what, this last Wednesday? Five days ago? Since then, I have talked to two other women, uh, a woman in the Netherlands and a woman in Jamaica, about writing for Hero Press. And originally, they both said no. And I said, well, will you go read Sheba's essay? And they both came back to me and said, well, that's really great stuff. If she can write, I can write. And if they can write, who else can write? Who else can tell their story? <laughs> okay, there we go. Um, when I first started collecting essays, I struggled to get contributors every week. I'm like, okay, I gotta get somebody because when does it? Wednesday's coming. But now I'm starting to get ahead. Right now I have a whole month ahead, and. It used to be the problem was finding somebody with a good story, and now my problem has become finding someone without one. Everybody has a great story. I've heard 10 great stories today. I say, you know, how did you get into WordPress? And, oh, it's a big story. I was, I was doing this thing that I hated, and I quit, and I picked up WordPress, and now I'm making a living, and now I employ 10 people, and, that's 10 people who have jobs who didn't before. And they're gonna, their life has changed. Their kids' lives has changed. And just the, the stretch, the expanse has become staggering. The number of people who tell me out of the blue, you know, I, I read 
and it changed my life. And because that person's life was changed, and now I'm going to go change somebody else's life, and it just goes on and on and on. And on. Um, can you go down a little bit more? Um, nope, not this one. Haha. <laughs> this is Michelle. She did the Waku. Hers has been the longest essay by far. Uh, maybe twice as long as everybody else's. Because WordPress changed every part of her life. Um, it changed her marriage. It changed her employment. It changed her hobbies. It changed her art. It changed everything about her. And because of it, she is really deeply involved in the community and changes hundreds of people all the time. To thousands of people. Everybody's life has changed because because of Michelle and because of WordPress. Um, but now one more. I think uh, this is Becky. Becky, when she was 48 years old, had been working in the IT world fixing printers, basically, making people's laptops reboot. And she hated it. She was so tired of it. Um, she was divorced, her husband was gone, her kids were grown. She was living her life so that she could go fix printers. And she said, this is terrible, I don't want to do this anymore. So she quit. And she said, now what am I going to do? And somebody said, uh, no, you know what, she was, she was walking down the street and there was a sign on a building that said uh, WordPress training. She said, huh, what's that? And she walked in. And now she's a full-time freelance developer because because of WordPress, because she can, because it was easy enough that somebody could walk in off the street, pick it up, and start working on it. Um, go down to the next one. This one is significant to me. Um, this is Samer. He's from Lebanon, and his title feels a little gimmicky. I didn't really like it. I said, can we find a better title? He said, no, it's important. This title is important. He lives in a small village in the hills of Lebanon, a couple hundred people, and it's one family. The entire village, it's one family. And none of them are into computers. And he runs a WordPress agency there. He got a computer, he got online, he learned WordPress, and he is a full-time freelance developer making an excellent living. And he's never been to a meetup, never been to a word camp. He did it all on his own. Um, the online community facilitated that. He does a lot of translation work. He speaks uh, Arabic, French, and English. So he is involved in that translation community um, the internet allows him to get contracts from anywhere in the world, and WordPress has enabled him to become a re reputable WordPress developer all on his own. And I said, okay, yeah, you did it, other people can do it. Um, The stories go on and on. I'm not going to tell you every story on Hero Press. <laughs> We've been doing one a week since uh, March, I think. And I don't see an end to it. Um, in fact, we're expanding a little bit. Uh, something exciting that almost no one knows, but you guys will be the very first to know. Um, my former employer, XWP, is going to sponsor Hero Press. They're not going to own Hero Press. They're just going to be a sponsor, kind of like a WordCamp sponsor. Um, and they're going to give $200 a month to Hero Press, and that's going to go into a fund, which will then be used to sponsor struggling WordCamps anywhere in the world. So I've been working with. Thank you. Uh, I've been working with WordCamp Central to help identify struggling work camps. Um, and by struggling, we mean uh, work camps that can't get sponsors. Um, 
and it happens. You know, sometimes there's a WordCamp that just nobody's really interested in sponsoring that WordCamp. Um, well, here request is going to be there for that, and we'll just be a regular WordCamp sponsor. Nothing, nothing super special. Put our little logo on the page, just like every other sponsor at every other WordCamp. Um, but we're going to target target the ones that need help, that that are struggling, and that's really exciting to me um, to be able to give back in some way because. <laughs> I feel like I'm the one that's getting in all of this. You know, I get I get to go to India. <laughs> I uh, I get handshakes, I get hugs, I get smiles and tears, and and it's great. So I feel like this lets me give back. Um, and it's not even me; it's not my money. I'm just talking to people and shaking hands and pushing buttons and making things happen. Uh, but it's really exciting, and I'm really looking forward to to when we can sponsor our first WordCamp. Um, I don't have a whole lot more to say. I could go on and on forever. I have stories forever. Um, but I wondered, is there any questions? That would be a no. <laughs> All right. Um, well, it could be done or we can tell stories. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Sure, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, Alex mentioned when we first announced Hero Press for the Kickstarter, um, most people liked it, but there was some pushback. Um, there was some misunderstanding. Some people said, well, how's it different from WordPress.tv? It's just people talking about WordPress, right? Um, some people said, well, we don't need more hero worship. We don't need to get um, Matt and Levesque up there talking about how great he is and WordPress is and all of that. And so I decided to engage the people who were pushing back because it was valuable to me. There was a problem. They saw a problem. I wanted to know what the problem was and I wanted to help solve the problem. Um, there were some people that said, why are all of your first people men? Why are there no women? You must be a sexist pig. And um, I said, well, okay, I can see how you might think that, but I'm not. And here are the reasons why there are no women. Um, these are the women that I asked, and here are the reasons they said no. Um, and responding to the, the, the hero worship aspect, I pointed out that the speakers, the essays, the contributors are not the heroes. The people we're writing to are the heroes. You guys are the heroes. And you may or may not know that yet. But everybody has the capacity to be a hero to someone else. Even if it's just one person. You can do that. And we want to facilitate that. We want to to write essays to you to say, look, this this can happen. This worked for me, this worked for this person, it can work for you. You can do this. Be strong, be bold, reach out, talk to people, make it happen. You can do this. So the heroes are the readers. Um, I spent, uh, <laughs> I have a policy. I only log into Facebook quarterly uh, for about 10 minutes. And they say hi, and I leave. <laughs> But uh, there's a group called Advanced WordPress, and there were quite a few people on there who were pretty unhappy about it. And I logged on and I spent an afternoon asking questions, saying, "Why? What? What bothers you? Tell me. Tell me what bothers you about this." And I thanked them, every one of them, everybody who came to me and said, "Hey, I don't like this because of this." I said, "Thank you. Tell. Thank you for that." Um, I would like to help resolve this. I would like to, to figure it out with you. Um, this is a new thing. I'm building it. It, it might change. It's, it's going to change. It has to change. And it obviously did change. But almost, I, I, think, I think there were only one or two people who in the end continued to say, I don't think I really like this. But even they were, were doubtful. Lots of people came to me and said, you know, I didn't like this at first but I really like the way you listen to me. 
and I like the way you asked for my opinion and didn't just say, oh, you must be wrong because it's different from my opinion. Um, and that was a big deal for me, personally. It taught me a lot about um, how to deal with unhappy people. Uh, when someone comes to you and says, I don't like what you did, rather than say, well, why not? <laughs> Too bad. I say, well, talk to me about it. Tell me, why don't you like it? What can we do? How can we make it better? What can I change to make you more comfortable and more happy? And it changed a lot of opinions. And it was, it was very, very dramatic, very impressive. Um, it changed the way I talked to people. And there you go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the question is, um, you have 10 people, you have 10 opinions, and they're all different, and you can't make all of them happy. How do you deal with that? Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Um, this happened. And the way I handled it was by saying, I hear what you're saying, I appreciate what you're saying, and I can see your viewpoint, but I need to do it this way because of this reason. And if you have a good reason, other than I don't like your opinion, or I don't like you, then people are much more likely to say, well, okay, I mean, I wish you did it my way, but if you have to do it this way because of this reason, then I guess that's just the way it is. So they may not be happy, but they're not angry either. Anyone else? Yeah. Oh my, <laughs> my favorite story. Oh, which of my children? <laughs> Oh, wow. Um. Oh, let's see. It's almost always the most recent one. Because that's always the one that has had the most impact most recently. Uh, for the last two weeks, I've been talking to Sheba nonstop. You know, you know about what she's writing and what's going on in her life and learning about her children and and all of that. And so that's the one that's in my head. Um, but, wow, I don't even know if I could pick one. The, the best moment, the best moment is when I'm talking to a contributor and I'm ask, I, you know, I ask, will you write? And they're like, well, maybe, tell me about it. And I start to tell them about it and they start to tell me their story suddenly they're getting excited about their story and they're going faster and they're getting more excited. They're like, yes, I have to go write this down. <laughs> um, that's, that's the best. You know, their eyes get all excited and they're like, mm, I've got to do this. Um, Becky Davis, she was on the screen a minute ago. I talked to her in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And it was at speaker dinner. We were, there was a, um, you know, it's nighttime, there are bugs in the air, the lights are going. And, and I just said, tell me your story. And she talked for 45 minutes. And it was exciting, just listening to that story. Um, I don't think I can answer. I don't think I can pick one. They're all great. <laughs> yes. Thank you. I've thought about that. Um, the question is, are we ever going to go back to the video plan? And I don't think we will exactly like that, um, where we send a videographer to someone to lecture or something. But when we were preparing for Hero Press, I interviewed the speakers. And it was just on, the, on our Max. And it was very candid. You know, we talked about everything. We talked about, you know, 
where they live and what it's like there and on all of that. And that was very interesting. Um, I loved it. And I would, I would enjoy doing some of those again, I think. Just interviews where I just sit down with somebody and it would end up being like a podcast, you know. Um, but rather than be about WordPress news, it would be about life, it would be about the people. Um, that reminds me of something. Um, my wife has always been very tolerant of my hobbies. She's not a computer person. And so she puts up with me being on a computer all the time. But she got very excited about Hero Press because we have two little girls. Well, they're in their teens. They're not little anymore. And they were interested in WordPress. And so we started taking them to WordCamps. And um, there are several young people in the US who go to WordCamps without their parents. Uh, there's a, well, Nikhil, he's a, he was a contributor. He's 15 now. He's been to several WordCamps around the US. And he, he goes by himself. And my wife wanted Hero Press to, uh, to reveal the people of WordPress. So say you're a parent and you've got a kid who says, Mom, I want to go to WordCamp. What's WordCamp? Who are those people? Are they crazy? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, my wife wanted some place where she could go and read about these people. You know, what are they doing? Why are they building this thing? What is this thing? And, and to be able to get some level of trust about the WordPress community to let their children start communicating with people on the internet. Um, and that has worked. Um, my children are now Twitter friends with several contributors. And you know they chit chat a little bit, but they know them. And someday, if they decide to actually get serious and become WordPress developers, they're going to know all these people. And that's huge. If you want to get into the community and start being a developer, knowing people is huge. Does that answer your question? All right. I have no idea what time it is. 2.23, all right. Any other questions? All right, then I think we're done. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> I, I do want to say thank you for bringing me here. It, it's been really, really amazing. I really wanted to go to work camp Mumbai and it didn't work out. And this was like a second chance. <laughs> so thank you.